They're on. Right on. A square. Is that good? Yeah. I've done that before. Wilcox TA truck stop. I'm pumped up now, y'all. Mm, glory to God. Heavenly Father God, we thank you. You put in us a desire of you to be of you. Mm. Yes. You are Jesus, you are the example. I am to live mm, like Jesus, Heavenly Father God. Thank you. Amen. <clears throat> I talked last week about things God's trying to convey to us. We have discussed God's word conveying love towards us, conveying peace towards us, right? Uh, peace towards all men, we know that. Uh, the little Linus story there, he tells them the peanuts every Christmas. You know, that's from Luke. Um, he's conveying freedom to us, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, let our hearts receive a simple truth. He's also conveying truth to us. We learned from Pastor Mark last Sunday at, at, at Stan Hans Fellowship Church. There's a difference between praise and worship. And whenever we praise God, we are just declaring the truth. You are mighty. You are redeemed. You are holy. You are worthy. Those are truths. That's how we praise whenever we have these things coming up to us. So in Matthew 13, if you want to get there real quick, way in the back, verse 46 through 50, this is another truth. This is the parable of the dragnet. 47. Again, the kingdom of heaven, and it's, the kingdom of heaven was used 32 times, 32 times in the, in the book of Matthew. Where other places were saying the kingdom of God. And, and Matthew, the kingdom of heaven. Alright, it's going to get deep. The kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet that was cast into the sea and gathered some of every kind. Hmm. Right? Praise God. <laughs> we, we speak to people the truth just like evil shows up and speaks lies. We, we know that's the truth. Right? We, we can have people come up to us in the kingdom of heaven and, and prophesy over us with a blessing or a warning. We can also have people of evil show up and speak falsities and lies over us. Because it, he's taking us out of the kingdom of darkness. That means there's a kingdom of darkness. Yeah. He put us into the kingdom of his dear son's love, right? Praise God. So verse 48, which when it was full, he drew to shore, and they sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but threw the bad away. So it will be at the end of the age, the angels will come forth, separate the wicked from among the just. Just because some bonehead spoke evil over you, Guess what? I, I go look at them dead and I say, that's a lie of Satan, but I'm here to tell you the good news of God that you don't have to live that way no more. You can be redeemed from all this evil that you just spoke over me. That, that's, that's praising God. Because the truth is, all you have is one lie. If you're of the wicked, you only, are you sure God said that? Well, God does not curse us. We watch too many videos on this stuff. If someone comes up to me and reminds me of a curse, well, those things are not of God. It's counterfeit. Get bent. Get out. Because in the end, if you stay that way, you will be separated. So, verse 49. So it will be at the end of the age, the angels will come, separate the wicked from among the just, and cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Y'all, that's a truth. Oh, there's no hate. That's all just, uh, I forget the stupid words they use, you know, it's just, it's just fanciful. The truth, the living truth, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The truth is not a concept or a philosophy. The truth is Jesus, and the truth told you, apart from me, you'll be thrown into a place where there's gnashing and gnawing your teeth for all eternity. But, but because of the love of God, he sent his only son that if we believe in him, we shall not perish but have everlasting life. 
In everlasting life is John 17, 3, right? That says, everlasting life is knowing the Father and the Son. Praise God, I have now been justified, and it is true that when the separation comes, I'm going uptown, not downtown. I'm going to non-smoking. I ain't going to smoking. But when Jesus was talking about the kingdom of heaven, I'm going to get into this, he wasn't talking about the sweet by and by. The kingdom of heaven is now because of the day of Pentecost. Yep. We have the power and authority given to us with the born again spirit and then also having the, uh, Holy, uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit to do just like they did in the book of Acts when Jesus says, stay here and the comforter will come and when he does, you, he, will get, he will do you with power on high. And then that's when the kingdom of heaven starts. We are still part of the first church. We're, it's, there's no different Holy Spirit receiving. There's no different Holy Spirit power. We're not less than the first church. We are the only church. And church is made up of many things because there's that one verse where Jesus said, in the great household, there are many vessels. Some are wood and some are clay and some are silver and some are gold. If the lesser would choose You'll be useful for the master's hand. If I'm not choosing to praise him in truth, when counterfeit garbage shows up, right, I'll still be a, a, a lesser vessel. Probably still die and go to heaven if I confess that Jesus is, but I have not learned yet this power that I'm supposed to walk in. I'm all, that's, this, this fired me up. So, the kingdom of heaven is first. And it's the physical ruling place on earth that is the Holy Spirit power given to us to rule and reign now. 32 times the kingdom of heaven at hand was, was uh, used. So Pentecost, so Jesus was saying that the kingdom of heaven, when it shows up, when it shows up 32 times, the kingdom of heaven will be like this and like this and like this. So when Pentecost, at Pentecost, that was the culmination of, of everything that Jesus was speaking about. So if you go back and look at all 32 times what the kingdom of heaven looked like, and if your life does not look like those things, but you profess to be a believer, right? You have not yet. It's like saying, it's like, you know, just buying a car. Anybody go buy a car and throw yourself into it and never have any formal training on how to drive a car. Right? You got to go to class and sit in a room with other people and take tests until you are worthy enough to receive the privilege of having a driver's license. You know, but if you never do that, you're out there causing wrecks and turning your light, you know, right on red or where, you know, because you can't even read the signs. Or you, you've not studied to show yourself approved. And it's not that. Well, I'm a bad person, and I, 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 I can't do those things. It's just pride. Self-doubt is also pride, which is another lie. Pride is not that I don't have to go to church, but I'm not worthy, and I, I cannot connect. That is pride, and pride is a thing of hell. So when those things come up, right, Mike, we have to cast those thoughts down and, send, and, and, and find, because pride is not a spirit. You know, right? There's not a spirit of pride that is in a, uh, where, where, where's all the gifts of the spirit at? In Galatians 6? Pride's not one of them. Because big-headed pride is it's a rain stick. And poor me pride, if you turn a rain stick over, it makes the same sound. Pride is pride. It's either poor me or, or, or you know, I ain't got to. It's still pride. It's the same lie. But like I said in the beginning, God's conveying to us love and peace and freedom. Mm. If I'm still struggling, where's the peace that he's conveyed to me through his son? If I'm still struggling and I can't even love one another as you have loved yourself. That's like the only commandment given. 
If I don't even love myself self to receive first in fellowship the things of the Holy Spirit that resides in me, but I keep bucking because I'm listening to a lie. If I can even love myself to receive love, how can I love other people? Can't. You can't. I'm so stuck in self. I have not taken the dead man off of me yet and threw him in the grave where he belongs. And if I have done that, I'm taking the shovel of pride and digging up the dead man and I have enough strength to dig up a hole and throw all that dead man over my shoulder. And the fruit of taking on the dead man will show. My misery will show in everything I say. My heartache will show in everything I say. You have not put on Christ, you're still toting around a dead man, which should be yourself. I have to right? cast off the dead man and be risen again and alive in Christ. That's why Paul said, I will not glorify in anything except for Christ and Christ alone. <coughs> Doesn't matter what people say to me or around me or at me. That's not glorifying Christ and Christ alone. That's glorifying the problem spoken to me. And, and if it's, uh, you know, if, if one person shows up with an evil spirit and they say same, the same thing as another evil person's spirit, it's still the same lie. Yeah. You know, there, there's a saying, black recognizes black. Yeah. Right? When guys have swagger, they're like, swagger recognizes swagger. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right? They say that. Well, black recognizes black, and evil recognizes evil. If I'm a Steelers fan and my buddy is a Cowboys fan, <laughs> and we go to a sports bar together, and the Cowboys are playing the Steelers that day, yeah. right? I'll go hang out with the Steelers fans, and he'll go play hang out with the Cowboys fans. And we will be in the spirit of the game for who I'm rooting for. Who I'm professing, I believe, is the winner. Yeah. You're going to be the winner. Right? Evil is the same way. I am now of the kingdom of God. I need to act like it. And profess the things of the kingdom of God. Okay? Because the kingdom of heaven is now. It's inside of me, and i got to act like I'm on Team Jesus. If I'm still rooting for death and lies and sadness and brokenness, that's exactly what will come out of my mouth. Every time I open my mouth, if it sounds like death and dying, well, whatever you sow, you will reap. Yeah. Go Vikings. Gert would say that. Our brother Gert. Thank you, Gert. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? We Even in the natural, well, I can be friends. I can know you, Right? And you can be a non-believer and I can be a believer. Well, when it comes time to praise Jesus in truth, I, I need to make sure I'm on Whenever they start talking, like the, like uh, a lot of guys uh, believe in all the Valhalla stuff, well, I don't believe in God or Jesus or Satan. I'm going to Valhalla because I'm a good warrior. You're not Scandinavian at all to begin with. So that, I mean, you can't even discern that lie. God's the gate. Right? I mean, Gert would be the only one probably if that was the truth would be going. The rest of us are Gentiles. We're not Scandinavians. No. Well, if you've been born again, you're now, if you've been born again, you're now of the kingdom of heaven. Now. Yeah. Right? Uh, and yeah. that's because you've uh, confessed with your mouth and believed in your heart that Jesus is Lord and you're saved and you're born again. Someone, someone said to me, one of their friends was uh, uh, about to die. He told me this yesterday. I was like, oh, man. He's like, he's ready to die. I'm like, I'd I, I, I like to go with you and talk to him. You know, uh, uh, Jesus said that the kingdom of heaven is like a man who has an orchard, and in the morning he paid people $1,000 for a day's worth of work. In the afternoon he paid people $1,000 a half a day of work. And at the end of the day he paid people $1,000 for one hour of work. And the people who were in the beginning were mad because the people at the end got paid the same. Well, he's talking about salvation through him, him and his work alone. It doesn't matter what you or your family were Praise and God. at what time of your life you choose to join Jesus, the payment is the same. You are born again. Amen. You are new, and everything after that is not of the kingdom. You have now been separated. 
It might show up and look like the truth, like I got this, I got this uh, counterfeit million dollar bill. <laughs> it looks like a regular bill. I forget it was on the front. Hamilton? Franklin. Franklin. Right? That's what they call hundreds Benjamins for Benjamin Franklin. This is a million dollar bill. I cannot pay for people's breakfast <laughs> with this. No. It looks like the truth, right? But it's, it's counterfeit. It doesn't matter what people show up and speak over me. It is not the word of God. It is therefore demonic. It is therefore unholy. Woo! Yep. It is twisted. It is wicked. It is evil. And it, it is not of me. I receive only from the word and from the Holy Spirit, the third person of God, the Holy Spirit. is the only thing I receive from. Anything else that comes up against me is a lie. Because the kingdom of God, I mean, he just told me right out the gate this morning, Mike, Matthew 13. And I opened it and, just, and I read the headline, the parable of Dragnet. And that's where I started this morning. He just gave me that. Had no idea why. Right? This is why. But it's because his, his desire, he's conveying to us the things that he wants us to have and to walk therein with power. We don't have to say, well, I don't know what God's doing. If you're reading his word, he's conveying to you what he wants you to do. It's not about what he, he is doing. He has done it. It is finished. Yep. Yep. Now, I got to take it. Like, if I gave someone a real million-dollar bill, they would take it with joy and start applying what they can get out of it to help cause peace. It would, it would, it would cause me peace if I could pay my debt. It would cause me peace if I could pay off my car loan. It'll cause you peace if I give you the real payment for things in your life. It'll cause you health, good health, if I give you the truth of the full payment, of the real payment. Yes, the real payment of Jesus. Hallelujah, right, Rick? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. The truth of the, of the power of God through Jesus Christ on the cross, we are not condemned. And we just watched the video. Praise God, it was so powerful. Paul was on the whipping post, and he looked back and he said, Am I condemned? Is it lawful for you to be a uh, be the Roman? And the guy's like, oh, should I be beating this guy? Well, we're not in. There's no condemnation now to those who are in Christ Jesus. We may look like we're tied to the whipping post of our past, of our family's failures. We're not. We're not hitting the mark. Whatever you want to call it. But we can look back at those things that want to beat us down. I'm not condemned. You, you can't beat me no more with that lie. You can't beat me no more with that garbage. I'm free in Christ Jesus. You bet. Yeah. Yeah. You bet. Yeah. The Satan, the darkness, wants us to stay with no peace, with no freedom, with no joy, and bound. And we're sitting there going, I'm this and I'm that, because someone said, what did this say? Who told you you were naked? There's only one lie of the devil. Are you sure Jesus said that? Are you sure God said that? There's only one lie. Well, I'm condemned because of my past. No! <laughs> he paid for my past on the cross. He nailed me and my old dead man to the cross. It's only through pride and ego and self-abuse that I think I got to have that day, God. Let me take him up. I'm a scumbag. I need to wear that scumbag in this. Go that several way. You're doing it. And Satan just laughs. He goes, you do that all by yourself. I have no I have no power over you. You've been washing the blood of Jesus. What your dumb head makes you want to grab a dead man and tow him about. And then you act like you are. You totally forgot his son. In his work on the cross, his blood that covers you. By his stripes you're healed. Oh. So you ain't got to do nothing. If my broken humanity also was nailed to the cross, how can I broke up? How can I pick up broken mindset out of humanity and still apply it to myself? If I have a mindset of something from my past, I've I've not yet received freedom from my past. And whenever we praise Jesus by saying you nailed it to the cross. I don't receive crap from my past. 
I have been born again. I am brand new. Jesus is my older twin brother. My spirit is just as perfect a spirit as Jesus is right now. In my, my spirit, everlasting life, John 17, 3, is knowing the Father and the Son. Everlasting life is now. My spirit right now is in eternity because I have fellowship with God. I don't have a problem fellowshipping with God because I, I speak the truth that that is already in me. I'm not waiting for the sweet by and by for the spirit to be okay because I walked through the pearly gates and Peter said, come in and you look great and come on inside. And then now your spirit will be perfect and you can hang out with God. No, we get to hang out with God now. And in the great household, there's wood and clay and there's silver and gold. And if the lesser would choose, I have, just like we tell people in AA, my old sponsor's like, Gus, you can do all you want and speak a really good AA, this, that, and the other, or whatever. But when it comes time to actually work in the program, you cannot carry me in your back pocket. You have to do the work. Yeah. That's what we teach in AA. But the difference is, then that leads me up just to a choice to I get to get into the AA big book and apply what it says and call my sponsor and go to meetings, right? The difference is, Alcoholics Anonymous does not have a comforter. <laughs> It does not have the truth. Because I had a conversation with guys the other day. They only half read even the big book. Well, we're gonna be we, you know, we're gonna be like this forever. No, it says right in the big book that you have been uh, healed. Uh, you you have been recovered from a seemingly, seemingly a hopeless state of mind and body. You you oh no, we're gonna be in recovery forever because we're gonna be sick forever. It oh. says right in the book that you have recovered. Alcohol and drugs is not your problem. A seemingly hopeless state of mind and body is your problem. That's your problem. And even the big book says that you can be recovered from it. That's right. So why would I walk around with a lie, even in the AA program, well, I'm going to be sick for the rest of my life. No. You, they don't even read the truth in a, in, a, in a spiritual book and get it right. When I have been recovered, on all aspects, because he nailed them to the tree, and what he paid for is is way more than this would ever be if it was real. The truth of his payment would be a real million dollar bill, but it's way more worth worthy than that what he paid for. So we have peace and joy and righteousness, the Holy Spirit in us. That's what it says. Uh, I forget right where it's at, but. The Holy Spirit comes to convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. But since I've been born again, I have righteousness in me. I don't need to be convicted of it. Uh, I don't need to worry about judgment because Jesus took the payment for my judgment. And he's not convicting us of sins. It's singular. The word sin in that content is, is missing the mark. And Jesus is the mark. So he will convict, he will, the Holy Spirit will convict you of missing the mark of knowing Jesus. So could we even do that after we got born again? Could we be stumbled in some not knowing and still be missing the mark? Well, I can't know how to fellowship with Jesus. Well, you're missing the mark of knowing him because you're not even professing that you are because he said so. See, we have to no longer conform this world, but be transformed, uh, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Uh, Romans 12, 1 and 2, right, Mike? Yep. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm going to read all of it because it's good. All right? Mm. I beseech you, Paul's like, I beg you. He's talking to the Roman church. So he's talking to a bunch of believers. Get your head screwed on straight. <laughs> this is what the Lord said. And I beseech you, I beg you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. I can praise Jesus reasonably. This is not a demanding lawful thing. He does not say you will go to church, you will read your Bible, right? But by the mercies of God. 
that you present your bodies, right? not, my, not my mind, not my will, not my emotions, right? I have to yield to things that come at me physically. So when people speak against me, they're speaking not only in spirit, but there's something physical in me, and we know evil is physical. You know, that, it, people show up with stupid physical evil stuff. And, but I present my body, the body of Christ, before evil, and say no. <laughs> right? Living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God. Your lie is not acceptable to God. I am acceptable to God because of the blood of Jesus Christ, and I praise God in that truth. You ain't got to believe it. You can, speak, you can show up with your blackness and your darkness all you want. Verse 2, and do not be conformed to this world. The blackness showed up with the lie. It's a thing of the world. It's wicked. It's twisted. It's evil. It's not of the new kingdom. I've been taken out of the kingdom of darkness and put into the kingdom of his dear son. So those things that come up against me that are not the truth are a lie. Be, trans, be conformed to the world. Do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and, a, and perfect will of God. That garbage spoken at me is not the will of God. Nope. Being born again, receiving the Holy Spirit, the repenting and believing is, the, is what God is trying to convey to us. This is not a book of do's and don'ts. You will not do things that lead to death. Right? If you sow to the flesh, you will reap death. But if you sow to the spirit, you will have everlasting life. In the great household are wood and clay and silver and gold, and if the lesser would choose, it will be acceptable and useful for the master's hand. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. All that old stuff is garbage. You said so, God, so therefore I can say so. I said, thank you, Jesus. So, now we were... Mm, now we do not regard to worldliness. I, I, I'm telling you, man, he just gave me this this morning. We do not regard to worldliness, to physical attacks, and spiritual attacks. That's what I got written down. We don't. We have those things. We have worldliness attacks. We have physical attacks. We have spiritual attacks. But I don't regard them. Because it's not the truth. Uh, I don't know about being healed. That would be a physical attack. But Lord, your word says, by your stripes I am healed. See? We, we, we have to know how to discern the word of God. Because the Holy Spirit convicts the world, like I said, of sin, singular, rejection of Jesus, righteousness and judgment. It, and, but the Holy Spirit empowers us to optimize uh, our Holy Spirit in us with the word in us against a sinful, wicked, twisted world. If I don't have this and I'm not in this and I'm not uh, not only conveying to myself the love of God, I can not convey it to others and whenever the lie shows up, if I'm not, if I'm not even conveying the love of God through the word into my life, when a, when a lie shows up, it's going to be even harder because I'm not receiving the love yet. Right? And there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. So when something shows up that's opposite of the word of God, it's conveying to us conviction that we're bad people and God will never accept you. What does that mean? That's what sin does. That's what wickedness does. You're, you're not ever going to be good enough. You dad come right? But the blood of Jesus says otherwise. <laughs> and that's what I profess. With every other thing too. Praise God, like I said, he gave me that and I wrote it down. <laughs> we are in the world. How many times do we say this? There's bumper stickers, we're refrigerating them. I am in the world, but I'm not of it. We're just passing through. So when, when darkness shows up, Mike, and starts flying over me, okay, well, I'm in the world where darkness persists. Right? It persists. Yeah. We're supposed to take 
take it, uh, those things with, with violence. That's why I'm pumped up. I'm like, no, Satan, not today. We have, we have in you the truth of the life, and we not only can say that, I was just saying this, whenever by Christ goes out, we go with the ministry of presence. We don't Bible thump people, but because we're sharing with them as we talk, and we might convey the word, you know, today's the day of the Lord, and we should be glad and rejoice in it. I just said the word over them. They might not know that was, that was the word of God, but the, the ministry of presence is in me. The Holy Spirit is in me. I can't speak to people lost and dying and going to hell if I can't even speak it to myself first. Because I'm listening to a condemnation lie telling you're not good enough to go to heaven. And no matter what you did and what your family did, you're just going to die and go to hell anyway. So I'll just give up and not go to church hang out with other Christians. Don't read your words. You're just a scumbag human. That's not what the Bible says. If I've been born again, I am in the kingdom of his dear love. He's conveying peace to me, righteousness, holiness, power. To speak the word of God, not like when I was in the hospital, but like, oh, how come you're not pissing and moaning and complaining about being stuck in the hospital? Because my circumstance does not, uh, does not uh, suggest what my joy should be. The circumstance of someone speaking over me does not, does not speak over what my joy should be. My joy is in Christ Jesus. Paul said, I will, I will boast in Christ and Christ alone. All right? That dude went through all kinds of stuff. We were talking about the last week. So Matthew 13, like we just said, straight up tells us the truth. If you're missing the mark, he was talking about sinners, you know what I'm saying, will be divided and everything. Well, the word sin, I said last week, means missing the mark. Jesus didn't say you're some long-haired, tattooed scumbag with a past or whatever. You're dying and going to hell. That would be conveying, you know, con con condemnation, excuse me. He didn't do that. He said you're missing the mark. He didn't say because you're a long-haired, tattooed scumbag, dying and going to hell. His word conveyed to me with truth and love and peace and opportunity for freedom before I was saved that you're just missing the, the word sinner means missing the mark if Jesus is the mark right I was missing it <laughs> so he straight up tells us the truth if you're missing the mark you will be separated so people who have professed to know Jesus and we talk about this all the time they can still be missing the mark I can't, I, I just don't know how to converse with God. Well, when you're missing the mark, first of all, that's a lie. If I took, like I had the little thing, if I took this and, and put this in a package, it's inside of the box now. Right? I don't know how to converse with God. That's a lie. You have the God inside of you if you've been born again. You're just still conveying a lie. You're missing the mark. What is the mark? Well, the mark is he's put into us a desire to know him. If you're born again, you have the desire to know him. But Lord, I don't know how to do that. Well, all you're doing is missing the mark. So how do I how do I get on track? How do I start hitting the mark? Turn around. <laughs> what you've been doing so far ain't working, right? You've been receiving darkness. You've been receiving garbage. You've been self-condemning. I don't do no those things. Those are counterfeit, those lies. Turn. Repent means do a 180, not a 360. I'm born again, but I'm still all beat up and trashed up, garbage up, <laughs> fouled up, and filthed up, messed up. When did, when did you get out of the kingdom of darkness, like it's a dark shadow here, and turn into the kingdom of his dear son? Repent means to turn around, do a 180 from missing the mark. That's all it means. We have been even so, so condemned in churches. You're a sinner. Like I was told before. I, one guy was like, standing in church, told me, back in North Carolina, I don't care what you say. My mama says, you got long hair and tattoos, you die and going to hell. <laughs> in church. I was told that. But praise God, I already had in me the truth that what I was speaking was, it doesn't matter what you say, Jesus to me at that time was my president. Amen. Like in a motorcycle club. And if the president tells you something, you don't sit there and say, well, did he really say that? <laughs> well, you know, I don't think I'm going to do those things. I'm going to do it my way. Like my wife always says, well, how's that working for you? You know, we said that in a How's that working for you? 
No one in the biker club does that. If you say to your president to his face, I'm going to do it my way because this seems better, you're either going to get punched in the mouth or your color is stripped off the back. Okay, give me your patch. <laughs> right? I don't want Jesus punching me in the mouth. He said it, I'll believe it. But whenever I talk otherwise and receive the lies and the twisted wickedness, right, Mike? When I receive those things, I'm saying I know better than God, which is exactly what Satan did, which is a point of pride. You don't understand. I've been like this my whole life. Were you born again? Yeah. What day? Well, like two years ago. Well, you just lied. Because if you were born again two years ago, it's not been your whole life you've been like this. Because you were born again. You're just the one digging up the lie. Are you sure God said that? Woo! So if we're missing the mark and we'll be separated... Separated, like I said, you're going to go uptown or downtown. Smoking or non-smoking. Heaven or hell. That's what he just said. It'll be separated. And it will be, whoo, verse 50. And cast them into the furnace of fire. There's no hell. Jesus never talked about hell. He talked about hell way more than he ever did heaven. Yeah. But people miss that because actually he said 32 times the kingdom of heaven is like that. He said exactly what heaven is like. Quit receiving that lie. Well, he talked more about hell than he did heaven. No, he talked about heaven way more than he did hell. Because the kingdom of heaven is now. That's what he was saying. It is now after the day of Pentecost. Praise God. Jesus is the mark. No one, no, not one of us. We know that Bible verse, right? Or good enough. But, who Christ and Christ alone. If your heart receives the truth today, God's conveying his love towards you. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. First thing you can do is say, God loves me. Because yep. <laughs> he's conveying his love towards me, right? With the truth of his word that someone had to come preach to me. And faith, faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. We just don't go to church one time and say, well, I heard it. Well, man, pre pre preacher's preaching on that again? I have heard that. Well, you're showing your faith or your lack thereof, really. You, you, you only have enough faith to receive what you're going to receive. You don't get no more because you're the one denying yourself to receive more by stumbling yourself. So I said, Satan just sits back and says, keep it up, you're doing a great job. You're beating yourself up, you're condemning yourself, you're lying to yourself. But first, convey God's love towards me. He loves me. Repent and move towards the mark of Jesus. He's given us power to rule mm, in peace and joy. We're not how we say it, Mike, we're not, we're not uh, fighting, from, uh, fighting to victory or fighting from a place of victory. No. Right? We, we, we already have the victory. He is conveying to us the power to rule in peace. You can't come up this hill. I have the peace of the fullness of God. You can just fire off all your little fiery darts all you want. I have peace in my heart that Jesus loves me. I have peace in my heart when I read the word of God and confess it. I have peace in my heart, and I have joy. I can look at you, you toothless, powerless punk. And I can look at my own self-condemnation and say the same exact thing. I have to look at self-condemnation the same way I have to look at the powers of darkness. Because self-condemnation is a power of darkness. It's a power. It's a stronghold. Right? When we watched that thing about the guy talking about strongholds, it was like apartment complexes. <laughs> you had like a skyline sticking out of your head. And you go all these places where condemnation lives. And they're like a stronghold. And we have to, like on 9 11, when the buildings came down, we go to tear down those strongholds. That's a lie. Jesus loves me. His word says different. And walk there in the power that he's given us to have peace and joy. In victory, not hoping to have. Well, I hope this works out. I hope there's victory one day. 
He's already given you victory. His son paid for it. He paid for it. Woo! I mean, we got to get a hold of that. You got to get a hold of the sheer fact that there's nothing, not, there's not one, not one of us that can do or will ever do anything worthy enough of the kingdom of God. But his son did. And his son's righteous work makes us righteous. We are no longer condemned under the law. If you read in the book of Galatians, but whoever applies the law is then condemned. If you're applying the law, well, you got to do this and make sure your hair's like that and your beard's like this and you don't eat this and hang out on this day or that. You're applying the law. But all the law does is point to sin. It doesn't point to recovery. It doesn't point to redemption. It doesn't point. All the law does is point out that you are missing the mark. But Jesus said, I am the mark. And you can turn and repent towards me and start hitting the mark. Praise God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you because of your truth, Lord, that is in your word. And today, Heavenly Father God, I receive the truth that not only am I loved, but I am empowered today in victory because of your son's righteousness that when those evil things in darkness, no matter how powerful they, live, they, they may look, just like the woman that had witchcraft that was after Paul, kept busting his chops and running behind him and saying wicked stuff and everything. He finally cast that stuff out and she became a believer. That's in the word of God. She was so full of evil. She had evil speaking on her all the time. And she spoke evil over Paul all the time. And he said, no, you are loved by God. I bind the works of Satan that are in you that you can be loved of God and cast those things out of you. And we say that right now, they follow God. I do not receive the things of the kingdom of darkness. I receive the power and the love and the joy and peace of God. And those things that have come against me, I now bind and cast back. They might come back like fiery darts. And then again, I got to remember, he's, a, he's stupid. Satan's stupid. Heavenly Father God, we love you for your truths. We praise you for your truths. And we praise you for the truths that you put inside of us that we can rightly discern, Heavenly Father God. Darkness and light, Lord God. Counterfeit and real, Heavenly Father God. And when those things that come up against me, they're either spiritual attacks, physical attacks, or worldly attacks. When those things come up against me, oh, you're, you're so sad. Why even worry? You can't, you can't make yourself one inch taller by worrying. Your father already knows what you need before you even ask, but he wants to have fellowship with you, so he asks you to ask anyway. Because Satan will say, oh, don't bother the master. No, oh, he's conveying love and peace and joy towards us, Lord God. And that's what we want to convey also to the word today, to the truck stop ministry, to all those out there, Heavenly Father God. You right now, no matter where you're at, Start speaking the truth. I am loved. It doesn't matter what my past is. Because I've been born again. Or I want to be born again. We love you, Heavenly Father God. We praise you. And we thank you for Jesus, who is the Christ. Nailed all combination to the cross with him. Rose in newness of power, Heavenly Father God. And then conveyed on us after Pentecost, the Holy Spirit for us to have. To have the same Holy Spirit resurrected power that was in Jesus is inside of us. These things we must confess, Heavenly Father God, over and over and over because we have an enemy that has nothing else better to do but attack us. But we know the truth, Lord God, because we are in the truth and the truth is in us. We love you, Heavenly Father God, and we pray all this, like I said, in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen.